A super cartel? That sounds dangerous, right? But unfortunately, the world of drugs and smugglers does scare the hell out of us. And there we enter the world of Rafael Imperiali, the notorious informant who brought down one of the biggest cartels in history. But what led to his eventual downfall and capture? Get ready for a thrilling journey as we uncover the twists and turns of his incredible story. Then, let's dive in and see where it all went wrong. Here we begin. Now let's talk about a gang of drug dealers who lived lavishly in Dubai and pretended to own the world. Yes, that very gang is now in utter despair, and some members might regret being a part of the group as it just came to light that one of the members had turned into a crown witness against his former associates. Raphael Imperiali, born on 24 October 1974, is an Italian criminal and member of the notorious Italian Camorra crime syndicate. Authorities named him as one of the most important drug traffickers affiliated with the Camorra. It's been years since he has been on the most wanted list in Italy and across the European Union. As one of the primary targets for law enforcement, every day he spent in freedom, he considered it as his last day of his life. Unfortunately, the end of his era came sooner than later. Raphael Imperiali was stunned when his legacy was on the verge of being completely destroyed and could not believe what had just happened. But how did he become a crucial figure in the drug trade? Imperiali led the foundation for his life full of crime back in the mid-1990s. It started in Amsterdam when he inaugurated a legitimate coffee shop sandwich shop called The Rockland. It was a complete legal cover-up for what he was doing behind everybody's sight. To this day, you can search for the company in the Dutch Chamber of Commerce. Apparently, his house in Amsterdam was too simple for a man like him to reside in. He also set up an Italian restaurant in Amsterdam, which turned out to be one of the finest restaurants in the town serving Italian food. He even received a 9 out of 10 stars from the best food reviewers. In fact, his business was booming and he was flooded with cash. But there was something else going on behind the scenes. Through his coffee shop, he connected with criminals and was determined to be among the top dealers of XTC and cocaine. After staying in the Netherlands for some years, he moved to Spain and finally settled for a lavish lifestyle in Dubai. A report stated that he used to spend a whopping 400k euros monthly to keep up with his luxuries. However, he and his associates had a great time in Dubai. He successfully blindfolded the higher authorities all through these years, until in 2016, he was caught when the cops found a vault near a small house near Naples. Shockingly, that wasn't just a house, it was a secret place owned by Imperiali, where the criminal heads gathered together for discussions. The police found stolen paintings of Van Gogh from Amsterdam in 2002. As his polls started opening up, he did something totally unbelievable and strange. He was trying to be more tricky, or he might have been scared of the severe punishments he must go through as a law breacher and decided to act differently. He wrote a six-page letter to the prosecutors and agreed to give up all his wealth to the government, including ten villas and ten luxury cars, to name a few. A notorious drug trafficker decided to surrender in the heat of the police. But he was far-sighted. All he tried to do was to prove his innocence and do something even more far-reaching. His intention was never to give up on drug trafficking. He was not going to take a step back anytime soon. He went a step further and joined hands with international drug traffickers from Europe to reach the peak of drug trafficking and became known as one of the biggest super cartels in the world. He was in fact an exception. It's rare to see drug dealers working as a team instead of building an empire alone. Instead, they combine their expertise in drug trafficking lines. They bundle them together to become a super cartel as powerful as controlling one-third of the entire cocaine business in Europe. The members of the super cartel include Daniel Kinahan, an Irish man and a boxer by profession, Redouan Taghi, a man from Dutch, and Eden G, who belonged to the Netherlands. They were remarkable team players. They never fought amongst each other to hail the top spot, rather decided to seek it together. Though they were drug dealers, their team spirit is worthy of mention. The DEA announced them as among the world's 50 largest drug cartels of all time. It also came to light that they had a special connection with Peru regarding cocaine supply. As a result, an agreement was made to sell every gram of cocaine produced in Peru to the super cartels. Meanwhile, the police stayed alert and devoted to their mission. It was when the notorious Irish gangster Daniel Kinahan threw his marriage party at the Seven Star Burj Al Arab Hotel and invited his closest partying guests, including Eden G and Raphael Imperiali. Things took a complete turn and resulted in multiple complications. They were now caught red-handed, and there was no way they could escape from the hands of the police, even in Dubai, a city considered safe for criminals from being caught. Little did they know the cops were trying to establish a link among the four. 
and fortunately, their mission was a success. All the four were indeed connected. But at the same time, something massive took place. There was a sudden cyber hack by government officials, which exposed millions of chats worldwide. It also included the chat history of these super cartels, where they thoroughly discussed cocaine supply, its arrangement of shipments and prices, its modes of export, and its routes. A havoc dawned on their life. No sooner did the news spread than they started executing other plans to fly away to a different country and succeeded in hiding just for a few days. This struggle finally stopped for Rafael Imperiali when he was apprehended by the police on the fourth day of August 2021 in Dubai. His new alias was Antonio Rocco. So far, Dubai, which seemed to have turned away their faces to criminal activities and extradited no criminal to other countries and seemed like heaven to the smugglers and other lawbreakers, then started to pay heed to crimes and other injustices as they wanted to change their image of safe for criminals and Dubai was no more the same as before. Among the criminals who thought they were safe in Dubai but were apprehended later also include Redouan Taghi, a member of the super cartel. Imperiali was arrested at his residence in the Burj Al Arab Hotel where he enjoyed the extravagant lifestyle. Many resources could be recovered from Raffaele's residence, including cash, old and expensive historical paintings, jewelry and other ornaments, as well as different passports. After spending five months in jail in Dubai, he was extradited back to his country, Italy, on the 25th day of June 2022. Raphael Imperiali, being one of the biggest drug dealers in the world, the famous super cartels, to surrendering and proclaiming himself as the crown witness in the court against his former associates, seems quite a transition and is beyond the imagination of common folks like us. Immediately after, a deal was struck between Imperiali and the government of Italy, which has extremely strict anti-mafia laws. It has not yet been known what the deal was. Still, per some sources, there might have been a negotiation of better living conditions and lesser years of Raffaele's imprisonment over him exposing their deepest, darkest secrets. As per some other sources, Raffaele agreed to such a deal because of the severity of the punishments they needed to undergo, including strict rules to abide by and complete isolation for the entire duration, which Raffaele hated doing and chose to speak up. Each word uttered by Imperiali would be of high value and a solid proof of evidence to be used against his former associate Taggy of the Netherlands. This would definitely be a difficult phase for Taggy to go through. So far, four statements have been issued by him to the judges. Though we do not clearly understand his statements, we all know something not so trivial is on the way. What are your thoughts on this? Would he reveal all their secrets and crush the very empire they built with all their efforts every single day? and bring down his former associates along with him? Or would he play smart enough to protect himself and his fellow mates without allowing a single scratch to come up on their business alongside reducing his sentence? Do let me know in the comments below and subscribe for more.